Hey all, Tavis here, back at the zoo. So today I'm going to bring you my five top tips to advance pathing. Uh, so say mine, they're not mine, they're actually, um, I've been in the community for a while. Uh, but when I was kind of starting off in this game, um, there wasn't a single place that I could go and find all of these tips together, all of these advanced tips anyway, there's lots of basic stuff. Um, so yeah, I thought I'd put this together, hopefully this is useful, um, and let's crack on with them. Okay, so number one, small steps. So this is quite useful in the game. Um, I use this all the time. Basically, the problem that you have in the game is, as you can see on the on the settings there, and this is the same with Q or Path or or Staff. The, the smallest length that I can go is this one, whatever this one unit is, which I'm guessing is a meter. Often that is you know, just really high, um, and when you want to, when you want to up a small iteration how do you do that the easiest way to do it is to get a and you'll have probably seen this in the game but you maybe not have used it to, to its maximum potential is to get something like the transformer i always use the transformer because it's the cheapest if you're playing franchise that sort of thing matters and i have just as i've so i've placed it down got rid of that um overlay obviously and as i've pressed x i have now got control of it i've got the the fine tuning control and you'll see that I've now got the option to you know as much smaller kind of um, increments of steps there and you'll see it, you know, it gives me a lot more gives me a lot more scope and range for those smaller steps so all you want to do is put it down again remove that and there you are you're on a new you're on a new layer so yeah we've stepped up so you can actually get up really small amounts if you want to and the results of that can be stuff like this so as you can go up down you can the only thing you are limited is to, to is um that these will force you to a width and you can do this with staff buildings as well but they'll always they'll always dictate the width of the path so you can never get a big wide path to do that okay so number two is narrower paths so you'll see on the path option usually on the path or staff paths you only have the minimum width of four meters that generally looks fine for most cases so yeah you're making your path through the through the zoo but in some cases you might want a smaller path and you would see that if you can imagine you'd seeing a path off to a toilets or something you're not likely to see a great big four meter path you're likely that to be a much narrower path or if you want to do something where you're doing you know a little set of stairs or you're doing um, a path through a woodland walk or something like that it's often just nice to have that extra option to be smaller go for the smaller paths so what we're going to do is we're going to use the fact that queues um and i saw this first on mike sheets's videos but i think he i think he i'm not sure if he was the one that found it i think it was goes back to planet coaster days so we're going to use the fact that queues go down have an option to go from three and two and they obviously go maximum of four but we don't need that so we're going to use three. I find that three is quite a good balance. And on the flat, it's super easy. So all you're going to do, as you see, as soon as you select the queue, it's giving you, it's just going to give you a branch. Don't click down the queue, add the path. And then in order to continue that path on, obviously I can't go back to path because it's going to make it a four meter again. So I need to do the same. It's actually easier, usually easier in this case, if you've got the, um, the angle snap on. Um, but you can do it otherwise um, so i'm just adding a, a uh, an extra q piece onto that once i've done that it will allow me to go back sometimes you have to click off of it in fact i always have to click back to path to go back to q and now you can see it's allowing me to add another branch on for a three meter so i can continue to do that as often as i want basically so we just repeat that pattern then so so path, so I'm at three meters there. I go back to queue. I add a piece of queue. I click off of path, off of queue onto path. That then, and back to queue. And that then gives me my branch again, or my empty node, let's call that. And that will then let me add a path. There is a way of doing this where you go up a slope as well, or up steps. So let's say I want to get a three meter path to go up some stairs. Um, so I'm again going to add up back in the queue. This time I'm going to take it up one level. In fact, I'm going to take it up two levels. You can do it any number of levels you like. It will work. Um, once I'm at the top, I'm adding 
one layer or one flat pad of, of the queue doing a 90 degree turn and then adding in a an angle piece like that so you've got a slope once i've got that i'm taking everything back out i'm adding in a path to that which is now a three meter path you may find sometimes you have to remove this path if it's um if it's a bit close it might try and snap once i've got that path back in so that's a three meter platform there attached to that slope add a queue on the other side of it again like we had to before we're going to click off of the queue onto the path and that sort of seems to refresh it back onto that to add a node in and then the slightly tricky bit but this is where i'm going to try and drag my mouse down add a node to the path below and then go back to path and that is then auto filling in that gap so let's show you again because that's a little bit complicated that one so we're going to do we're going to continue going uh what we're we going to do Let's go, let's go a bit further on this one. So I can continue to go up this if I want to. So I'm just doing the same, same approach here that I was doing on the flat. I'm just now doing up at this, at this higher level. So back to Q, we're going to add in our steps. We'll just do it one layer this time. In fact, we'll do it two layers again. Um, and then we'll go one of those, one of those, upper slope, take those out, click back on path, flatten that off, gives me my, my platform there, go back to queue, add the queue on the other side of the path, go back to path to refresh it, go back to queue, go back down here again to put the node back in, and then auto fill in the path. Number three, so this is definitely a bit more of a simple one, but, um, this is a case of uh, smoothing your smoothing your corners or rounding your corners. So I've got a little cross shape here, but this will work on kind of anything. It'll work on bends, etc. Uh, and all I'm going to do is I'm going to get I'm going to go into this little gap here. I'm going to left click it to add a node, and then I'm going to right click it to take it out. And all that does is just adds a nice little smoothed off uh, corner to that otherwise kind of sharp angle um, so you can get some really nice sort of organic shapes and stuff into your path can be a bit fiddly you can see there sometimes when you get a combination of them going on it can be a bit a bit janky um but maybe that's gonna work oh yeah it did work so it's difficult to get it to get to get it sort of symmetrical but you can see the benefits of doing that and you can actually kind of build it out into real into really big kind of plazas if you wanted to. Um, just carry on adding the nodes and smoothing them out. Uh, so there we're getting to kind of a bit of a bit of an interesting shape. Okay, so number four is how to build an underwater tunnel. So a few people have done this. I've included this in one of my videos. Um, the key to it is create your body of water first. Um, and then the, the, the big bit that people don't really tell you in the videos, and I don't know if I mentioned in my video either, is that once you've got that body of water in, make sure you're 100% happy with its position. Because once you've put the path in, you will not be able to remove that body of water and place it. You'll have to take all the path back out again. So it's a bit of a trial and error one, this one, because you need to get the height exactly right. I'll show you an example of it not working, and I'll show you why it's not working here. Is we've brought our path down so we've got tunneling on and the tunneling obviously as you know it takes the terrain away around the edges of the path but if i just try and show you the position of my why my path has been why are you floating up there again i'm down right so if i just show you where that path is snapping try and get down into the water why is it getting attached to my camera like that <laughs> there we go uh right the wonders of parving in this game so if you can see the position that that wants to intercept into the water or into this body is actually in the middle of the water so it won't let you do that it will say obstructed by volume of water so that is only applying to the mechanic of where the or the hitbox of the path it isn't going to apply 
to the amount of terrain that it will clear around itself. So if you if you see like yeah, that's obviously cleared that amount of depth around it. So we can use that to our advantage. And I'll show you one I've prepared earlier over here with that derpy camera moving around in my face with my weird bit of path just floating around up there. Come down. <laughs> so yeah, so we've got this one in the right height. Let's just get it to snap somewhere. Why is it up there, game? What are you doing? It's because we're trying to make a video showing people the eccentricities of, of parving in this game. Doesn't mean you have to like find me a new one. So yeah, so we've got this one in the right position. Hopefully this one will work. Um, and you can see that's blue. If we go down, we'll see it's not actually in the water. It's underneath the water but it's close enough and you could probably get it even closer than that. But when we click it, it then clears enough of the vertical terrain above it to allow you to do something like this. Now the trick to this is, um, once you're, if you look, I'm still in the water technically there. That's the point at which I've left because I've you know, come below this line, which is the original body of water. It doesn't flow the water down. Obviously that's, that's not how the game works. Um, and then you've got, uh, yeah, you've got this little kind of, you've got this little nub. Um, and so you can put glass over the top of it. If I just show you one I did even previously. So you do get a little, you know, you get little cases where it feels a bit like you're still underwater. Because if you're up here, technically you're underwater, but the game, you know, don't, it won't visually look like that to the peeps and the peeps will come down here. The last one, number five. So this is probably the one I learned most recently, actually. Uh, so this is how to do gradual slopes. Um, and there's two versions of this. The easy one is when it's a gradual slope that's attached to the ground. So if we go over here, we'll see a... Uh, so, yeah, what you get in the game is often you get... So, oh, let's just take that off and turn tunneling back off again. But lots of people do, and I was guilty of it. I've been guilty of it in the in the uh, in my build so far. Is that people use the snap points that the game gives you? So we've already said, Joe, it's not very realistic to have a set of stairs like that very often in a in a in a space that's supposed to be you know accessible that sort of thing. The same applies really to the slopes that we get we get given in the game. So we often you know if you think about that from a peep level, if you go down and actually look at that slope. Imagine walking up that hill, let alone imagine pulling, pushing a pushchair or a wheelchair up that hill. It's really, really steep. So how, again, do you come up with uh, slightly more nuanced and, and subtle versions of those slopes? I'm going to show you. So how you do it, the best way to do it is get rid of that. You want to create the land first. And the best way of doing this, it seems a little bit odd, but is to use the 4x4, four four, well in fact you can probably use any of them, but I think the 4x4 four four, um, Adventure Tour one works best. Put the station in, and then the key to this is you want Auto Tunnel selected. And because we're now laying a track, um, I've got much more finer control over that, that gradient. So I can use this, if you watch what happens, so let's say it's a 3 a three degree incline and because I've got that tunneling on it's actually adding in the terrain underneath it and so that lets you put down to a nice gradual slope and onto that all we need to do is put the one at the bottom keep it on a 90 degree and actually if you just do it as a longer piece I'll put that in place there you've got to get the um, You've got to get the width quite right. And there we go. So, yeah, that's obviously where I've fallen off the top of it. But there gives you a nice graduating slope. Um, and then the trick to that is then uh, how you end up with something like this is once you've got the that initial piece in to use the flatten to surface option, get a nice big, you know, the biggest you could get find somewhere roughly in the middle and click and you're sort of clicking and dragging up and down the slope so it won't be 100% perfect but it will be a lot better slope than you know if you were just using that 
you know the preformed um, degrees so if you look at that I mean that's still pretty high but um, so you may be better off going with a sort of one or two degree incline so that's how you do it on the ground more complicated is how you do it or over a you know over a raised platform so if you're on an elevated platform for example how do you do it so we want to do the same thing we don't want to suddenly abandon um you know, abandon our our principles of keeping fl uh, paths reasonable and flat we're just going to do a quick path section here and what we're going to want to do is again we want to say we want to be able to go uh, up a slope but not anywhere near as steep as that so we're basically going to do the same thing but we're going to use this time I'm not going to use the cues sorry we're going to use the rides again and i found the best one that i've used so far is the is the gondola and we don't need this time we don't need auto tunnel on but we're going to go you know again do the same thing we've got uh let's say a three degree rise and the game will obviously keep on adding those into the right spots now this is definitely the trickiest one out of all of these things it takes a bit of of finagling and and accuracy so what you want to do is get yourself a pillar or a post and where the path supports or where the uh, the track supports sorry have come down turn off let's turn off a line to surface will make it a lot easier you want to put a pillar as close to the middle of that as you possibly can uh in fact that, that the the horizontal position doesn't matter too much but you want the vertical position to be as close to the top of the track as possible now this will definitely take you a good two or three attempts to get this right i didn't get it well on the first attempt and i've only done this a few times but let's see how we get on so we're going to put in a couple of we're just going to do two or three of these so i'm using the advanced move there um, and obviously doing this fairly quickly for the video's purposes Try and keep it so that the amount that's kind of sticking through is roughly the same. Um, I probably haven't done an amazing job of that, but we shall see. Now this is all probably seeming a little bit alien if you don't if you haven't seen this one before. So I think that's probably good. That's the last support we've got. So now we've got our pillars in, we can go back and we can go back to the track. Uh, and we can take out this puppy so go back to this track we no longer need that all we were using that for was to get our uh, our graduation like that then we go back to the path tool and we're going to press the shift key and we're going to try and get this basically as close to the middle the pillar as close to the middle of our of our path section as we possibly can as i said this is going to take We'll take some refinement and some trial and error and for sakes of the video now i'm pressing control there to keep that from snapping yeah for the sakes of the video this is probably going to be a little bit off but we shall see how we get on let's keep that nice and short get that path down there again holding control whilst using the shift key to move it up and down and then more and then the last one is probably going to be a bit tricky because we've not got a, a lower support in. So now we've got those little dots in. We want to join them together. So you want to be careful here that you get exactly the right one. So just kind of move the mouse around up and down as much as you can. And you'll see that it's just giving you... Again, I haven't done a perfect job on this. But it's giving us a really good fairly gradual slope it looks like that bottom one was a little bit off but actually these these, these three are reasonable so that's a nice reasonable kind of uh graduating slope or kind of one degrees two degrees or whatever we said there this one i'd probably have to go back and do again but yeah so that's basically it guys i hope you found that useful uh, my name is toves and i shall catch you guys on the next one take it easy